My name is Russell Sullivan. This talk is titled Birth of the Near Cloud. The Near Cloud is what you get when you put serverless and CRDTs together and host them at the edge. A little bit about me, I am a distributed systems guy. Lately, I've been making a lot of NoSQL databases and currently I'm the CTO of the company Cohero that I'll be talking about. So what does the Near Cloud mean? And the definition, the simplest definition is compute on data at edge. So the minimum requirement for some cloud-like functionality is to have compute on data. And then to get it near your end users who are spread out all over the place, you need to do it at the edge. So the cloud is for most people, you know, in Herndon, Virginia, AWS, US East One, and the near cloud is spread out. You know, it's it's near your end users. It has a it has a lot of different points of presence or pops. So how do we implement this near cloud? Well, we have a serverless stack and the functions access a CRDT based data layer that runs at many, many CDN edges. So this talk is mainly about how we got from this compute on data at edge to this mouthful of keywords, serverless CRDT at, CR, at CDN edge. And to explain all of this, I like to put in a little bit of history and talk about the serverless wave that started in 2014 with Amazon Lambda. All of the major cloud providers quickly followed suit. And this all started in the cloud, but it quickly spread to the CDN edge with Cloudflare workers and Lambda at edge. It got bigger. It spread beyond the last mile. We got IoT, mobile, and storage running embedded serverless stacks. So serverless is just getting gigantic. And where it's headed is to become a ubiquitous platform, you know, a ubiquitous compute platform. Anything you got, we'll stick serverless on it. You know, we'll, we'll take care of the operations for you. Just write the code. And I'm going to take this pretty visual, pretty busy visual and reduce it to an architectural diagram. So first step is single cloud. And then the CDN edges become, or the CDN pops become, you know, racks of servers and all of these edge devices from, you know, phones and laptops to planes, trains, and automobiles are just represented as device icons. And since we're not just talking about the states, we're talking about the world, let's refer to it as the last mile. Inside the last mile is the cloud and the CDN pops. Outside the last mile are the devices. And I refer to this image as a bullseye with three rungs. So next topic is the symbiosis serverless has with databases. Serverless only does compute and to do anything really interesting in compute, you always need to have a data layer. So in the cloud, there's a ton of choices for data layers. And, you know, Lambda calls into DynamoDB on the right here, Azure functions call into Cosmos DB, and that's the innermost rung of the bullseye. The outermost rung of the bullseye has these embedded serverless stacks where Amazon Greengrass is calling into IoT and Firebase functions are calling to one of their databases. And the middle rung, the CDN edge databases, simply don't exist, which leaves us with a picture where Cloudflare workers and Lambda at Edge are stateless. They have nothing to call into. So in a perfect world, our expectation should be anywhere we have serverless, we should have a local database. Unfortunately, the reality is that the middle rung is missing state which is wasteful. You can move a lot of work from the cloud out to the edge. And when you have state, you get benefits in latency, bandwidth, robustness, and you get them across a lot of verticals. So why aren't there any edge databases? And you get edge replication, data replication at the edge has peculiar requirements, which mean you, you need to use new technology. So the cloud, the Innermost ring, the cloud data replication is simple. The middle ring, edge replication is difficult. And the outermost ring, uh, device replication is difficult. It's sorry, simple. <laughs> so in the cloud, it's simple, right? You have a function calling into a local database. Everybody's in the same cloud region. Architecturally, it's very simple. Device replication is also simple. You have a embedded database that basically mirrors itself with the cloud. There's no sharing between these device databases. The brown is not sharing with the gray or the pink here. It's all segmented by device. 
but the edge is peculiar. Edge work is work you take from the cloud and for efficiency reasons or robustness or latency or a myriad of reasons, you move out to the edge, which means logically it's a single database, but physically it's not. So we get a mismatch. We get a geographically distributed database at the physical level, but logically it's a single database. And this is the way to look at serverless at the edge. You have functions calling into a single database. And when you get into geo-distributed databases, you have two choices, consensus-based, which use two-phase commit, or CRDT-based, and they both have pros and cons. Consensus' big problem is latency. When you do two-phase commit, you do two round trips, which between you know pops in San Francisco and New York will take you 200 milliseconds. If you're modifying the same data sequentially, you get down to five transactions per second, which is prohibitively slow for a lot of applications. CRDT's problems are people just don't know about them. They're new. They're not well understood. So let's do a simple CRDT example. We're going to do some con concurrent counter increments. And the real trick of CRDTs is they use commutative operations, which can be applied in an arbitrary order. In this example, we have three actors. Everybody starts with x equal to 2. These three actors, they add different values. One adds 1, one adds 2, one adds 3. We replicate the data, and this can happen in any order. And there can be race conditions, and it doesn't matter. In the end, we all arrive at 8. And when you start with 2 and add 1, 2, 3 in any order, you always arrive at 8. And this doesn't just work for counters. It works for anything you have in JSON. And these attributes make it CRDTs perfect for the edge. They're autonomous. They don't need consensus from geographically distant POPs. Since they're autonomous, they implicitly ride, run concurrently. And when you have autonomous concurrent agents, there's inevitably conflicts. And what CRDDs 2 do is they automatically resolve conflicts. That's their magic. There are trade-offs, right? This is an ACID database. It's strongly eventually consistent. So there's no guarantee that everyone will have the same data at the same time. So if we start with the increment example we had before, and we superimpose some geography, clean up the database icons, clean up the replication icons, add some functions, add some pops, add some more pops. We arrive at the physical layout of the near cloud. We have multiple pops that are geographically distant. Each pop runs a serverless stack that accesses a local database and replication is done in a peer-to-peer -peer mesh. Logically, the near cloud looks exactly like the cloud. You have functions that run on a database. So for the API for this near cloud, we decided to do nothing new. And we decided to use the serverless framework because it works on everything. As our data layer, we did a document database. So when you get into, you know, something this spread out uh, and you're trying to be the missing middle layer that also has data, like the inner and outer layers, you strive for API compliance. And another word for API compliance is no lock-in for serverless. I feel strongly that we need to avoid lock-in. Um, it's a new technology. There's the possibility to avoid it, and lock-in is just lame. So how do we get functional API compliance? Uh, actually, functional and, let's call it code and configuration compliance. And we use a serverless framework. So anything you run via the serverless framework in Lambda, the code is the exact same in Kuhiro. And it's important to also sync the data layer and the data layer APIs. Um, it's part of your code. You know, your, your code calls into a data layer. So the APIs have to be compliant. And we put in a bunch of work to get decent coverage of compliance between DynamoDB and Kuhiro's data layer. And this enables one-click switching. You can take what you're running on Lambda and Dynamo, and just switch it right over via command line tools to Kahiro. And you can switch it back so you're not locked in. And you can have them running at the same time. So code and data, no lock-in. 
And this is the near cloud. You know, it's a serverless stack. It has a data layer that, because it runs on multiple pops that are geographically distanced, is CRDT based. So this is a real thing that has started. And this is the shameless promotion where we're in beta. We're accepting beta customers. So email me. I'd love to talk to you. And thank you very much for your time.